Dear friends, very good morning. In today's session, we are going to talk about approach to diagnosis of permanent tuberculosis. I am Dr. Rupak Singla. I am heading the department at National Institute of Tuberculosis and Respiratory Diseases, New Delhi. You see, if you look at the private sector in India, the TB diagnosis, an average TB patient in India is diagnosed with TB after a delay of two months and is seen by three healthcare professionals before the diagnosis of TB is made. And not only that, the private sector was the first point of care in more than 50 percent of cases in several studies. And on top of that, only half of the healthcare providers were aware of the importance of suspecting TB in person with cough more than 2 to 3 weeks, which we all know is the commonest symptom of pulmonary tuberculosis. Several studies across the country have shown that in the private sector, there is substantial under testing for tuberculosis and empirical treatment is being started. The importance of TB case finding and diagnosis cannot be over emphasized. The identification of presumptive TB cases at the first point of care and linking them to the best available diagnostic test, it can be done and can be done by universal access to the early and accurate diagnosis of TB and enhancing the case finding efficiency. The early and accurate diagnosis of TB, once we achieve it, it will lead to good outcome of treatment and also interrupts the transmission of TB to the others in the community. When we talk about diagnosis of pulmonary tuberculosis, always the initial thing is the clinical evaluation, then bacteriology, radiology and other methods, they come in the picture. First thing is when to suspect pulmonary tuberculosis. So, these are called presumptive pulmonary TB. It refers to a person with any of the following symptoms and signs which is suggestive of tuberculosis, which includes cough for more than 2 weeks, fever for more than 2 weeks, significant weight loss, hemoptysis or any abnormality in the chest radiograph suggesting tuberculosis. In addition, we need to remember that contacts of microbiologically confirmed TB patients, people living with HIV, diabetics, malnourished, cancer patients, patients on immunosuppressive drugs or steroids, they should be regularly screened for symptoms and signs of tuberculosis. Once you suspect tuberculosis, the recommended diagnostic options for tuberculosis are that we see the bacteria, that is smear microscopy, or we grow the bacteria called phenotypic test like cultures, or we use the, the genetic information, they are called genotypic methods. The tests which have been endorsed by our national program that is revised national TB control program include sputum sphere microscopy for AFB that is zeal lenses staining and fluorescent staining. The culture and DST include the solid that is Lovenstein Jensen media, the automated liquid culture system that is Bactec Midget 960 or Bactelac or Versatrac. The, the DST includes the modified PST for Midget 960 system for both first line drugs as well as second line drugs or we can use economic variant of proportional sensitivity testing that is 1 percent using LJ media as a backup whenever indicated. Among the rapid molecular test, we have line probe assay for MTB complex which helps in the detection of resistance against INH as well as rifampicin and also against resistance to the second line drugs. Then we have expert MTB rifts testing using the gene expert system. Coming to the direct sphere microscopy, it is the technique of choice because it is simple, it is rapid, has a low cost and operation feasibility. It differentiates between active and heal tuberculosis and the specificity is very high to the tune of 96 to 99 percent. But it has some drawbacks. It has a low sensitivity and can miss up to 50 percent of cases. Although in cavity lesions, the sensitivity is very high, it can go up to 80 to 90 percent. The WHO dose strategy for optimized microscopy includes fluorescent staining, LED microscope using two samples and read by trained technician with the external quality assurance. And it has been shown that LED fluorescent microscopy, it can pick up 20 percent more cases than the conventional microscopy. The liquid cultures for the PTB diagnosis, 
it is a gold standard and WHO endorsed. They have high sensitivity and the isolates are available for DST and molecular test typing as well and they are ideal test for smear negative and extrapulmonary tuberculosis. However, they have two week turnaround time and they are very helpful in treatment monitoring also because you want to know whether the bacteria are dead or monitoring or not. However, they have some disadvantages that most of the time treating physician cannot wait for the culture result to start the treatment and it can take 2 to 3 to 4 weeks and also the liquid culture they require expertise and infrastructure. Coming to the genotypic test, they detect the genetic mutations which are linked with the drug resistance and in this category we have expert MTB RIF that is cartridge based nucleic acid amplification called CBNET and line probe assay called LPA and the genotypic MTB M, uh, DR plus assay is also called HAIN test and the results are available within one or two days. But they do not distinguish between live and dead bacteria. Coming to the LPA that is genotype MTB DR plus assay, it detects both INH as well as RIF resistance, INH based on the CADG and INHA mutations and RIF resistance based on the RPOB gene mutations. The results are available within one or two days. They have good sensitivity and good specificity. For rifampicin, sensitivity was to the tune of 98 percent and specificity also almost 99 percent. For INH, the sensitivity was low to the tune of around 84 percent with a very high specificity almost reaching 99.5 percent. But the limitations are that the LPA, it needs lab infrastructure as well as skilled personnel. Then we also have LPA for the second line drugs. The Cochrane review in 2014, it showed that this LPA for second line drugs also called MDRTB second line assay for the fluoroquinolones and second line injectable drugs, they had a pool sensitivity of 83 percent and pool specificity of almost 100 percent. It is a good rule in test, but cannot rule out the resistance. That means, in case LPA tells it is resistance, it is resistance, but if it says it is sensitive, it may not be sensitive. The LPA can miss 1 in 5 cases of chloroquinol resistance, it can miss 1 in 4 cases of second line injectable resistance and among the second line injectables, the poorer sensitivity is for the canamycin. And there is a version 2 now available in the market and our national program is using version 2, it has improved sensitivity to the tune of up to 90 percent. The expert MTB RIF also called gene expert, it is automated nested RT-PCR. It is a simple one test specimen preparation that can be used at the point of treatment that is wherever the treatment is being planned it can be used there. The results are available within 2 hours and it detects TB and RIF resistance, but does not tell us about the INH resistance. Then looking at the how good is gene expert for PTB diagnosis, a Cochrane review including 27 studies and almost 9500 patients, it showed that using the reference standard for detecting TB as a liquid culture and reference standard for reef resistance as a phenotypic DST, for smear positive and culture positive tuberculosis, the pool sensitivity was 98 percent and specificity 99 percent. Even among smear negative culture positive cases, the sensitivity was 68 percent, specificity 98 percent. That means, even if person is sputum smear negative where LPA cannot be used, it could detect up to 70 percent of patients. And used as an initial test replacing phenotypic DST, expert detected 95 percent of rifampicin resistance TB cases with specificity of 98 percent. Coming to the role of X-ray in the PTB diagnosis, it is an excellent screening tool. It has high sensitivity for the tuberculosis and has easy access in the urban areas. And among those with extra abnormalities, the gene expert can have very high yield. However, as we all know it requires infrastructure and manpower. And we know that TB can have varied presentation, it can be minimum involvement, it can have consolidations, it can have bilateral extensive consolidations with fibrosis, it can have miliary shadows, it can have cavitary shadows, it can also involve the pleura with hydropneumothorax or pyonemothorax. And we all need to remember TB can be make anything and anything can be make tuberculosis. The RNDCB recommendation on chest x-ray use are that the chest x-ray is to be used as screening tool to increase the sensitivity of the diagnostic algorithm and any abnormality in the chest x-ray should further be evaluated for TB including the 
microbiological confirmation. And diagnosis based only on the x-ray can result in significant overdiagnosis and some amount of underdiagnosis as well. In the absence of microbiological confirmation, we require a careful clinical assessment for TB diagnosis and diagnosis of TB based on x-ray is labeled as clinically diagnosed tuberculosis. What about the immunological based test for active tuberculosis? First coming to the tuberculosis skin test also called as TST. In children, the standardized TST may be used as a complementary test in combination with microbiological investigations, history of contact, radiology and other symptoms. But it has limited value in adults to diagnose active tuberculosis. Talking about the interferon gamma release assays called IGRAS, they are being used in place of skin tests in low TB prevalence countries to detect TB infection, not the disease. An exact advantage of IGRAS in high TB burden countries like our country it is still not clear and hence these are not recommended for use for adults in diagnostic algorithm for TB in India. And in India, the, uh, the serological tests are banned for TB diagnosis. In 2012, the government of India released a gazette notification where they banned the manufacture, importation, distribution and use of currently available commercial serological tests for diagnosis of tuberculosis. Coming to the RDCP, our national program diagnostic algorithm for pulmonary tuberculosis. First step is the whenever we suspect tuberculosis on clinical grounds that is called presumptive TB patient, we offer smear examination and checks the x-ray whenever it is available. If the smear shows smear positive, this patient is labeled as microbiologically confirmed tuberculosis. If smear is negative or the chest x-ray suggestive of tuberculosis or another scenario, the clinical suspicion is high but smear is negative or not available and chest x-ray is not suggestive or is not available, then they are offered the CBNET. In people living with HIV, then they are offered the CBNET examination upfront. After CBNET, either we can have MTB detected, again they are diagnosed as microbiologically confirmed tuberculosis. In case the MTB is not detected, these patients are offered other tests and evaluate for alternative diagnosis. After these tests, we can have clinically diagnosed tuberculosis or we can have alternative diagnosis established. Coming to the algorithm, diagnostic algorithm for drug resistance tuberculosis. So, one is the uh, uh, presumptive pulmonary tuberculosis cases where we offer the CBNET upfront or we have clinically diag the, all the diagnosed cases of tuberculosis. Among presumptive uh, TB cases like pediatric age group, the people living with HIV or we have extra pulmonary tuberculosis or EPTB cases, in these cases upfront CBNET is offered or in other cases where the TB has been diagnosed, but these cases belong to the category of either they are DRTB contacts, they are previously treated TB cases, they are TBHIV cases or they are non-responders to, to the TB treatment that is the follow-up sputum positives and sometimes a new TB patient which are in the uh, higher scale of the PMDT implementation, they can also be offered CBNET upfront. Once the CBNET report is available, we have either RIF resistance tuberculosis or we can have RIF sensitive tuberculosis. And whenever there is a mismatch between the CBNET and the LPA, the repeat CBNET is to be done. So, after the RIF resistance TB cases is diagnosed, then we do the second line LPA test. And if second line LPA test shows fluoroquinolones, and or second line injectable sensitive, then we can further do the resistance pattern against injectables that is canamycin and caprimycin and high dose moxifloxacin. And in case the FQs and the SLIs are sensitive, they may be offered shorter MDRTB regimen. However, in case we find resistance to the fluoroquinolones or second line injectable resistance, then DST guided treatment is to be offered to them. On the other hand, suppose it is found to be RIF sensitive tuberculosis on CBNET examination, then we do the LPA. If LPA tells us it, it, it is H resistance, they are offered treatment for INH resistance cases and in case H is sensitive, they are given standardized uh, treatment for the new smear positive cases in the country. So, uh, dear friends, the key messages for diagnostic algorithm for tuberculosis are we must keep in mind that early and accurate TB diagnosis is essential for better outcomes and to reduce disease transmission in the community. Sputum smear examinations, the CBNET that is expert MTB RIF and chest x-ray 
are recommended diagnostic tools for pulmonary tuberculosis and serological tests are banned for TB diagnosis. Thank you very much.